Hello, and welcome to this video. Today, we will be discussing the concept of the sling capacity reduction factor, which is a crucial element in ensuring the safe use of lifting slings. In the specific example we will examine, the only variable provided is the sling angle, which is defined as either horizontal or vertical. In this context, understanding the reduction factor is essential for accurately determining the effective load capacity of the sling based on its angle of orientation. The reduction factor adjusts the sling's rated capacity to account for the angle at which the sling is positioned, ensuring that lifting operations are performed safely and within the sling's limits. In a previous video, I addressed the calculation of the sling capacity reduction factor, but approached the topic from a different perspective. In that video, I used an alternative method for calculating the reduction factor, which may involve sling length, sling height, and lifting point distance to center of gravity. Today's discussion will build upon that knowledge, focusing specifically on the case where the sling angle is either horizontal or vertical. For this example, let us consider a scenario where the weight of the load to be lifted is 2.6 tons. We will be using two wire slings, each with a rated capacity of 2 tons. The angle between the slings and the horizontal is 57 degrees. The key question is whether these two slings, each rated at 2 tons, are sufficient to safely lift the load of 2.6 tons under the given conditions. In many practical scenarios, the reduction factor associated with sling angles is often overlooked during calculations. Typically, the procedure for determining the safety of a rigging setup involves several steps that may not fully account for this critical factor. Firstly, the load is divided by the number of slings used to determine the load distribution at each lifting point. This step provides the weight of the load that each sling is expected to support. Next, the tension in each sling is calculated. This is done by multiplying the load on each lifting point by the reciprocal of the sine of the sling angle. Following this, the factor of safety for the sling is assessed. The FOS is determined by dividing the safe working load of the sling by the calculated sling tension. The rigging setup is typically considered safe according to the calculations performed. However, this approach may be insufficient if the reduction factor due to the sling angle is not accurately integrated into the calculations. The reduction factor adjusts the rated capacity of the sling based on its angle, and neglecting this adjustment can lead to an overestimation of the sling's capacity and potentially unsafe rigging practices. Therefore, it is crucial to include the reduction factor in calculations to ensure that the rigging setup is genuinely safe and meets all necessary safety requirements. If you happen to forget the formula for calculating the reduction factor based on the sling angle, you can easily refer to a pre-prepared chart that provides these factors. These charts are specifically designed to simplify the process of determining the appropriate reduction factor for various sling angles. Here's how to use the chart effectively. Locate the sling angle, identify the angle of the sling relative to the horizontal. This angle is a critical variable in determining the reduction factor. Choose the next higher value, on the chart, find the row or column that corresponds to your sling angle. Since charts typically provide reduction factors for a range of angles, you should select the reduction factor corresponding to the next higher angle listed if your exact angle is not available. This practice ensures a more conservative estimate, which enhances safety. Apply the reduction factor, use the value obtained from the chart as the reduction factor in your calculations. This reduction factor adjusts the rated capacity of the sling to account for the angle and ensures that the sling's effective load capacity is accurately assessed. By following these steps, you can effectively incorporate the reduction factor into your rigging calculations, even if you have forgotten the specific formula. Utilizing the chart helps maintain accuracy and safety in your lifting operations. Let us now proceed with the mathematical method for calculating the sling reduction factor, specifically using the sine function. This approach involves a few clear steps to determine the reduction factor and apply it to the sling's safe working load. Calculate the sine of the sling angle. To determine the reduction factor, you need to use the sine function of the sling angle. In this case, 
the sling angle is 57 degrees. Using a calculator, input the angle and select the sine function. Now you will get the sling reduction factor. Adjust the sling safe working load, SWL. Multiply the reduction factor by the rated SWL of the sling to obtain the new effective SWL based on the angle. This result indicates that at a 57 degree angle, the effective SWL of each sling is 1.678 tons, which is less than the original 2 tons due to the angle's impact. Once you have calculated the new safe working load of the sling based on the reduction factor, the next step is to compute the factor of safety for the sling. This method mirrors the approach discussed in the previous slide. Calculate the factor of safety, FOS. The factor of safety is determined by dividing the new SWL of the sling by the actual load or tension that the sling is expected to handle. The formula for calculating the FOS is. This calculation indicates that the FOS is approximately 1.08, suggesting that you are utilizing around 92.37% of the sling's capacity. A FOS of 1.08 means that the sling is operating very close to its reduced capacity. Although this is above 1.0, it indicates a minimal margin of safety. In practical terms, this means that the sling is being used at nearly its maximum effective load capacity. Recommendation for additional safety. This is particularly important when dealing with uncertainties such as unknown center of gravity, variations in load weight, and other factors that could increase the load and tension on the sling. In practice, a higher FOS is preferred to accommodate potential variations and unexpected conditions. This additional allowance ensures that the sling can handle unforeseen stresses without compromising safety. Consideration of risk factors. Factors such as an unpredictable center of gravity, fluctuations in load weight, or environmental conditions that could affect the rigging setup should be considered. Allowing for a more significant margin of safety helps mitigate these risks and ensures that the sling remains reliable and safe under various conditions. By carefully calculating and considering the FOS and allowing for additional safety margins, you can ensure that the sling operates within safe limits even in the face of uncertainties and potential variations in lifting conditions. Now let us proceed for next example, if the angle is given from the vertical line instead of the horizontal, the calculation approach remains almost the same. However, you need to use the cosine function instead of the sine function. You can follow the same calculation in previous slide. Remember this. For calculating the reduction factor, if angle given at horizontal, use sine method. And if the sling angle given at vertical line, use cosine method.